Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to explain pseudo elements in CSS. Pseudo elements are keywords added after a selector that are used to style a specific part of an element. You have a selector, for example, h1, then two colons, then a pseudo element. One you might see is first dash letter. We can add some CSS properties and style the first letter of our h1 element. That's the formula, selector, two colons, pseudo element. Let's begin. In this example, we will need an h1 element. Why don't you go ahead and type in the word hello or something? I really don't care. And we will need a paragraph. To generate some text, you can type lorem, then hit tab. And a list. Let's create an unordered list with an ID of fruit. We'll have three list items. The first list item will be apple. Second will be orange. Third, banana. Let's give each of these list items a unique ID as well. ID will be apple. orange, then banana. All right, that is good enough for now. Let's head to our style sheet. We will use the first letter pseudo element to change the first letter in our H1 element. We have our selector H1, two colons, then a pseudo element. First letter is one. What would we like to do with the first letter? Let's set the font size to be 2EM. Basically, that's 200%. The H in hello is larger now. And I will set the font style to be italic. That is the first letter pseudo element. Let's select our paragraph. Paragraph, two colons. We can apply CSS properties to the first line of some text. First dash line. What would we like to do? Let's change the background color. Background dash color. I'll pick a yellow color. Something like that's fine. All right, so the first line is now a high letter yellow color. If I change the size of the window, the first line is still going to have that background color. Then the selection pseudo class is anything that's currently selected with our mouse. We're selecting our paragraph element to colons then we will use the selection pseudo element. Anything that's selected with our mouse, normally the text is white and the background is blue. Let's change that. Let's set the color to be white. Well, I guess that's the same. And the background color to be, let's go with a dark grayish color. No, better yet, let's make the color green for the text. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So anything that's selected will have a font color that's green and a background color that's dark gray. Now let's go to our list. The list had an ID of fruit. Then I would like to select any list items. With any list item, we will use the before pseudo element. We can add something before each list item. I'll add a check mark emoji. We can do that with the content property then within a set of quotes, I can select an emoji. So if you're on Windows, you can hold the Windows button, then semicolon, and there's a prompt for an emoji. I will find a check mark. That looks good. Now, before any list item, add a check mark, which we have. There's also the after pseudo element. We have a list item with an ID of Apple. After, after this selector, Let's add some content. I will add an emoji of an apple. Apple. There we are. Let's do this with orange and banana as well. Apple, orange, banana. Let's change these emojis. Orange, then banana. Those are the before and after pseudo elements. Before or after some element, we can add or change some content. 
Now with the list item, you can change the marker. For an unordered list, the default is a bullet point, but let's change that. With our unordered list of fruit, let's select any list items and use the marker pseudo element. Let's change the marker to be a check mark, but I'll delete what we have with the before pseudo element. I will also change the color of this check mark to be green. Pretty cool. Let's make it a little bit bigger too. Font size 1.2 EM. There. All right, everybody. So those are pseudo elements. You have a selector, two colons, then a pseudo element, which can add specific CSS properties to that selector. And those are a few pseudo elements in CSS.